Let's go over how we can implement request validation in minimal APIs. Let's get into it. So I just have this simple minimal API project open at the moment. And all we have is a few endpoints. So we have some get posts, create posts, and update post. So really simple, nothing too crazy. Let's run the application and see what it looks like. So let's just create a new post. And I'm just going to hit execute. And now if I go to our get post, you should see we have our post in there, which is, yeah, exactly what we want, right? Now let's create another post, but this time let's set our title to null and see what happens. If we hit execute, you can see we actually get a null reference exception. And the reason is we're actually doing some trimming on our request title and request content before we actually save it to the database. So we just want to remove any leading and trailing spaces. Our title is set to null. So the trim method is going to be causing the null reference exception. In order to implement request validation, we're going to be utilizing two things endpoint filters and fluent validation. First, let's start off by installing the fluent validation package. What we're going to be installing is fluent validation, and we're also going to be installing the fluent validation dependency injection extensions. Let's go to our program.cs and actually register fluent validation. First, we need to register the namespace of using fluent validation, and now we can actually register our validators. So we can go builder.services.add validators from assembly, and we're just going to be using the containing of program. So what this does, it scans our programs for any validators and it just adds them to the dependency injection container so we can use them later on. So now let's actually create a validator. So I'm gonna go back to our endpoints here and I'm going to create a validator for this create post request. So what we're gonna be using is public class, let's say create post validator. And this is going to inherit from abstract validator and we need to pass in our create post request as the argument here. So now we can actually create our validation rules. So let's say title and content can't be null. So I'm gonna go rule four x dot title, and we're gonna say not empty. And we're also gonna do the exact same thing for our content. Now let's create the validator for our update post. It's gonna be exactly the same, just checking if title and content are not empty. So we've created these validators. How do we actually use them now? Well, the next step is creating endpoint filters. Endpoint filters give us the ability to build reusable functionality that we can then apply to endpoints as we need them. Endpoint filters are really simple. All they are is just pre and post logic before we actually reach our endpoint. So here we have a request. It comes into filter one, then it gets passed to filter two, then it gets passed to our endpoint. And then it goes back through filter n and then back through filter one and then the response comes out. And one powerful thing about filters is being able to short circuit the request. So rather than actually forwarding the request onto our endpoint, we can actually short circuit and return a response. And that's what we're gonna be utilizing in our request validation filter. We're gonna be validating the request. If the request is invalid, let's return a 400 bad request. So what I'm gonna do is create a folder and I'm gonna call this filters. Next, I'm gonna create a class inside this folder called validation filter. And what this class is gonna implement is the I endpoint filter. So as you can see, this endpoint filter interface requires us to implement this invoke async. This is where we're gonna actually put our validation logic. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make this a generic class. So this is gonna take in our T request. Next, we actually need access to our validator. So I'm gonna create a constructor here and I'm going to eject an I validator of type T request and let's call this validator. Now what we can do is actually validate our request. First step is actually getting our request. So let's do var request equals context dot arguments dot of type request. And I don't want first or default, I want it to be first. Cool. Now let's actually validate. So we're gonna do validate equals await validator dot validate async. And we're gonna pass in our request. And we're also gonna pass in a cancellation token that is provided by our context. So HTTP context dot request aborted. So now that we have the result, if our result failed, we actually want to return a 400 bad request. So we can do that by going if not result dot is valid, we can return typed results dot validation problem, and we can pass in our result dot to dictionary. So now that we've confirmed that our request is valid, we can actually just go to the next step in the process. So we can go return await next and provide the context as the argument. So now that we have our endpoint filter, let's actually add it to one of our endpoints. So I'm gonna go back to my endpoints here and I'm gonna to go to my create post and I'm gonna go dot add endpoint filter. And I'm gonna pass in the validation filter and we're gonna pass in the 
create post request. So we've added that endpoint filter and we can also add this endpoint filter to this one. And we're gonna do update post request. So let's run this now and see what happens. So let's create a new post and let's set our title to be null, same as before. And we hit execute and you'll see we get back what we expect, a 400 bad request and it was saying titles, title must not be empty and we're getting some validation errors, etc. So one thing you might notice, our response documentation only says it's gonna be returning a 200 status code. It doesn't mention anything about, about a 400 status code. Let's actually fix that. Back in our endpoints, we can also use the dot producers validation problem. And we also need this on our other one. So what you might've noticed is me copying around this code, right? We've copied these two lines. Now imagine if we had 10 endpoints, 50 endpoints, 100 endpoints. We don't really wanna be copying this code every single time. So we can actually clean this up a little bit. So if we go to our validation filter and I'm just gonna create a new static class here so we can create an extension. So public static class validation extensions. And I'm gonna create a method here with request validation of type T request. And this is gonna take in a route handler builder and we're just gonna call builder. What this is gonna do is we're gonna go builder dot add endpoint filter and we're gonna pass in our validation filter of type T, T request, but then we're also gonna add producers validation problem. And what we need to do is actually return this and I'm gonna return our route handler builder. We've essentially just encapsulated those two lines here where we're adding an endpoint filter of our, of our validation and then it's also gonna be producers validation problem. So if we go back to our endpoints, we can remove this and go dot with request validation of type create post and we can do the same thing for our update post dot with request validation update post request. So if we run this now, so if we go to our posts, you'll see our status codes are 200 and then also 400. So we're getting our documentation correctly, which is good. And if we run this and we set this to empty and we hit go, you'll see we're still getting our 400 bad request, which is what we want, right? So here's our final product. We have our endpoints and we've added this extension method called with request validation, where we can pass in the request and it's going to be validated. So as you can see, we utilized endpoint filters and fluent validation in order to create reusable validation for our HTTP request. So if you have any other functionality that you wanna reuse across your endpoints, consider using endpoint filters. They're the building blocks of being able to reuse code and allowing our endpoints to be composable. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.